Jim Cramer, he thinks kind of a nothing burger. He thinks it's actually a buying opportunity. We also had some other insight. Former assistant AG for antitrust, Bill Baer, in our air yesterday, saying these cases, they can take years and years to unfold. I want to get your perspective. Beyond the short-term stock pressure, how do you see this impacting Apple's stock and its overall business? This is going to be a multi-year headache for Apple. There's no doubt about that. There are these cases, they wind through the justice system, and they require the companies to disclose lots of information, which is going to come to the public. Scrutiny on their business it will take off some of the marketing sheen that Apple has done so well to show that it's on the side of consumers. Well, maybe it's not exactly totally on our side. And there's going to be, you know, there might be a place where Apple says we have to settle, and that could cause further problems. All right, so you think there may be a chance they could settle again. Uh, you're in the same camp. You think this is going to take years and years. Um, I've heard some people say the DOJ is pretty much throwing the kitchen sink at Apple. They're kind of just going after everything. Merrick Garland getting very granular during that press conference. I was a bit surprised. Referencing the color of text bubbles, the quality of videos that you're sending your friends, and just kind of the feelings you have when you don't have the right text bubble. It got very granular for a minute. Um, how do you see Apple fighting back when the DOJ is kind of not only going after their business practices, but consumer sentiment, I mean, feelings. It's kind of a wide-range complaint here from the DOJ and these other AGs. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I was surprised to see Merrick Garland bring up, I think was part of the weakest part of this case, which is the green bubble thing. I mean, what has Apple done by locking in users on, on Apple messages? It's given way to the rise of WhatsApp, which shows that competition is healthy. And that's how I think Apple is going to fight back here. They're going to say the competition is healthy, that they're not the only phone in the game, right? The DOJ had to make up this a new category of performance smartphones that got it to saying that Apple's 70 percent of the market. Well, that only bumped up 5 percent from the 65 percent of the market that they have without this new category. Of course, Android is a real competitor. And Apple will say, listen, there is choice in the market. If developers don't want to work with us, they can work with Android. But they keep coming back because they're making money here. Same with consumers. If, the, okay. if um, their policies are so bad that they're making the product worse, then why do consumers keep buying? That will be okay. the defense. Alex, I want to uh, also touch on one other big tech story from yesterday. Microsoft unveiling its uh, new line of services that are going to be powered with AI. Uh, Gartner put out a report believing uh, their forecast, I should say, that 22 percent of PCs sold this year are going to be AI PCs. What's your take on this uh, announcement from Microsoft? Big deal, little deal, or AI PCs really the next big thing? I think the marketing is going to look really great. You know, I watched the introduction video. There's a button that you can hit and you get co-pilot on the side. And I said, you know what? I want that computer. But then I remembered, hey, listen, I have a pretty good and functional Apple MacBook and, and I like it. And so I think that's really going to be the case with the first wave of AI PCs and AI, quote unquote, AI devices. It's going to be more marketing than muscle. It'll, it's going to make you want it in the commercial. But when it comes down to what functionality that you're going to actually go for with the device you buy, I don't think it's going to make such a huge difference.